हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल आईआईटी जैम इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल सो इन द फर्स्ट टू लेक्चर्स आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द लास्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर एंड आल्सो आई स्टार्टेड डिस्कसिंग पीरियोडिक प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स इन माय फर्स्ट लेक्चर आई हैव कंप्लीटेड एटॉमिक एंड आयोनिक रेडियो एंड इफेक्टिव न्यूक्लियर चार्ज टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट periodic parameters or periodic properties of the elements that is ionization energy electron affinity and proton affinity so let's see one by one ionization energy the ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from an atom in gaseous state so that means let's say one atom is there in gas phase if we want to remove one electron from the atom then whatever energy we need to provide that is known as ionization energy that means if we remove one electron the atom become positive that means atom converted to the ions now if we want to remove one more electron from this ion then definitely we need to provide more amount of energy that's why the second ionization energy is always higher than the first ionization energy. and so on. the third ionization energy will be higher than the second ionization energy and which is higher than the first ionization energy now what is the trend in periodic table that is the most important part which generally come in the exam the trend of ionization energy in the periods so if we look at the periods we have groups and periods in a group the ionization energy decreases why because in a group the size of the atoms increases and as soon as the size increases it is more easier to remove an electron from the outermost orbital that's why ionization energy decreases in a group from top to bottom but there are few exceptions that i will explain so in general lithium having the highest among these group followed by sodium and potassium rubidium and cesium so this is the trend in ionization energy in a group same this also applied in beryllium magnesium calcium strontium beryllium but there is one anomaly or we can say the exception when it comes to the group 13 elements for boron having the highest but instead of aluminum thallium has the next then gallium then aluminum and at the end indium so we are going to explain why this trend follows this in ionization energy we will explain that other all elements follow the same order carbon silicon germanium tin lead which follow this order that means ionization energy decreases from carbon to lead again ionization energy decreases from nitrogen to bismuth and again oxygen to polonium fluorine to astatine helium to red but there are few exceptions in periods also in general in periods ionization energy increases from left to right side why because as soon as you go from left to right the atomic or ionic radii decreases and if the size of the atom decreases you will need more amount of energy to remove an electron from that atom that's why ionization energy increases from left to right in a periods but there are few exceptions for example beryllium has higher ionization energy than boron nitrogen has higher ionization energy than oxygen although boron comes later than beryllium and oxygen comes after nitrogen but why this anomaly happens you need to remember there are few things on which ionization energy anomaly depends you need to consider whether the electrons you are removing from the half filled or full filled orbitals whether you are removing an electron from a noble gas electronic configuration or whether you are removing an electron where there is any three electrons or four electrons are there so let's consider the boron and beryllium electronic configurations if we see boron it has 1s2 2s2 2p1 and beryllium has 1s2 2s2 electronic configurations now if i wanted to remove an electron from boron only this electron i have to remove which is not half filled or not full filled so it is easier 
for me to remove the reaction from two pure metals. That's why I need less amount of energy in case of boron. But in case of beryllium, it is very stable electronic configuration. And this 2s2 is nothing but it's a configuration very very close to the helium. That is a novel class electronic configuration. And it is very difficult to remove these 2s2 electrons. And that's why you need a high amount of energy. And this is the reason why beryllium has higher ionization energy than boron. Now if we wanted to apply the same concept in nitrogen and oxygen. In case of nitrogen we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 electronic configuration. And oxygen 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now 2p3 means it is a half pill. And as you know half pill orbitals are much more stable than the orbitals which are not half pill or full pill. So now in case of 2p3 if we wanted to remove an electron we have to remove the electron from a stable electronic configuration. That's why we need much higher energy as compared to the oxygen where the electron you need to remove only from 2p4 and after the removal it becomes the half pill. That means it gets some of the stability. So that is the reason that nitrogen has higher ionization energy than oxygen. So now come to this. As I told that this is a one of the anomaly and there is a chance that many exam this question may appear. Why this happens? Because of the intervention of 3D electrons in case of gallium and 4F electrons in case of thelium. Now, in thelium, due to the intervention of 4F electrons, and as I already told that F electrons are having very poor shielding effect, that means as the shielding effect is very poor, the orbitals get contracted. That means the size decreases. And that's why it is very, uh, we need more amount of energy to remove the electron from thelium. In the same case, I like to gallium because of the intervention of 3D electrons. Again, because of the poor shielding effect of d electrons or d orbitals, gallium also need higher amount of energy to remove one more electron. So that's why, and this effect is known as alternation effect. Sometimes you may not find this thing in normal textbook, but because of this alternation effects, helium having the next ionization energy next to boron, that means the series is boron greater than helium greater than gallium greater than aluminum greater than gallium. So you need to remember this series because in many exam discussions already appear. So this is about ionization energy where you need to only consider few exception things and you need to consider these points while you encounter any kind of extension you need to consider either half field or full field orbitals either you need to check whether the electrons have been removed from Nobel gas electronic configuration or whether there is any 3D or 4 d electron interference. Clear? So now the second most important property or periodic trait that you need to understand is electron affinity. What is electron affinity? Energy released when you add one electron to any atom in the gas phase. That means let's say one atom is there and you are adding one more electron, atom becomes negatively charged, that means it becomes anion and it releases energy. So now if we wanted to add one more electron, it becomes double negative if you wanted to add another electron you can triple negative. So now look at as soon as we added one more electron it become already negative charge. So if you wanted to add one more electron you are basically adding electron to the already negatively charged or already an atom which has high electron density. That means the second electron affinity will be much higher negative value because that time instead of release of energy you may need to provide energy. So that's why if we consider let's say n minus, n2 minus and n3 minus, so the electron affinity strain will be n3 minus having the highest negative value, n minus having the lowest negative value. That means in this case of n2 minus n3 minus, you may need to provide energy from the outside. Same case may be applied to O minus and O2 minus. So O2 minus having the highest negative value. Why this is happening? Because you are already adding electron to the electron rich species or where the atom having the higher electron density. Now this is about in general but you need to remember there are a few exceptions in periodic table about electron affinity. Like nitrogen and phosphorus, nitrogen although it has the more electronegative atom, 
it has low positive value of electron affinity. That means nitrogen having the low electron affinity than phosphorus. Why? Because nitrogen and phosphorus, in between nitrogen and phosphorus, the size of the nitrogen is smaller than phosphorus. So if you wanted to add electron to a small size atom, due to the inter-electronic repulsions, the electron affinity will be very less. But as the phosphorus size is higher, where well, electron affinity will be higher. The same concept can be applied to explain the electron, why the electron affinity of chlorine is higher than the fluorine. Because fluorine is already a small atom, and if you wanted to add one more electron, because of the small size, there will be strong inter-electronic repulsions, and the electron affinity value will be less. That means fluorine do not want to take the electrons. Whereas in case of chlorine, because of the higher size of the chlorine or larger size of the chlorine, there is no this kind of problems or inter-electronic repulsions are minimized there. And that's why in case of chlorine you have electron affinity which is higher than the fluorine. Same case also should be can be applied to explain why the electron affinity of sulfur is higher than the oxygen because of the size of it. Now, how we can explain the trend of electron affinity of a molecule like NO, NA2 and NO3. In this case, you need to remember one point that higher the number of more electronegative atom, higher will be the electron affinity. Because if you have more electronegative atom, it will be easier for the molecule to take the electron and to stabilize it. That means if we compare nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen dioxide and this NO3, then the electron affinity will be highest in case of NO3. Again, if we compare oxygen, molecule oxygen atom and ozone, then definitely ozone will have the maximum electron affinity. Because we have three oxygen, that means we have three electronegative atoms. Right. So that you need to remember. So in electron affinity, you need to consider only few exceptions. And although these are not exceptions, basically you need to consider the electronegativity as well as the size of the atom. Because if size decreases, sometimes the due to inter-electronic repulsion, electron affinity can be lower than the expected value. Okay. So this is about electron affinity. Now, another important property that you may not found in normal textbook, that is proton affinity. What is proton affinity? If we add one more proton to any atom or ion in the gas phase, then if energy is released, then we call this energy as a proton affinity. That means it is defined as the energy released during the addition of a proton to an atom in the gas phase or addition of a proton to the ion in the gas phase. And this proton affinity values can be measured or can be uh, uh, we can say experimental determined by ion cyclotron resonance spectroscopy. So now what is the trend of proton affinity? There is very clean and clear rule is there about proton affinity. That is, higher the negative charge, higher is the proton affinity. I am explaining it one more time. Higher the negative charge, higher is the proton affinity. Or higher the negative charge density, higher is the proton affinity. So let us consider few examples. Let's say we have ammonia, NH2 minus, NH2 minus of N3 minus. Now, which will have the highest proton affinity? As I told, higher the negative charge density, higher will be the proton affinity. So, among all those four, N3 minus having the highest proton affinity. And not only that, N3 minus having the highest proton affinity among all elements. It has the highest proton affinity among all the elements, which is M11 in periodic table. Now, please consider N3 minus and N3 minus. In this case, it is N3 minus, where only one negative charge and three nitrogen atom. In this case, one nitrogen atom, three negative charge. So, in this case, it has high electron density. That's so why among N3 minus and N3 minus, N3 minus having the higher proton affinity than N3 minus. Now, how to explain this switch where trimethyl phosphorus, dimethyl phosphorus, and methyl phosphine? This is trimethyl phosphine, dimethyl phosphine, and methyl phosphine. Or we can say the phosphine. 
so why this having the highest proton affinity because of the inductive effect the electron density of phosphorus is increases now it can easily get the extra proton that's why it is having the highest proton affinity followed by dimethyl phosphine followed by methyl phosphine followed by phosphine now out of phosphine and phosphide ion as soon as the negative charge is there definitely as per the rule higher the negative charge higher will be the proton affinity now why this is happening because higher the negative charge means there is a tendency to attract the protons that means the protons are nothing but the positive high positive charge so there is a possibility that it can easily attract the high positive charge and that's why it is having the higher proton affinity among as h3 and as h2 minus definitely it will have the higher proton affinity now among water hydroxide ion and or two minus which will have the highest proton affinity again the same rule will be followed and trend will be like this and that's why in proton affinity there is no anomaly as such you need to only consider that here you are basically looking for the proton that's why you need to consider which atom or which ion have the higher negative charge so that there is a tendency to catch that proton again among methoxide and methyl methoxide having the higher proton affinity now you can apply this to any system like i am giving and one more example let's say you have this one will have the highest proton affinity you can all easily answer that this will have the highest proton affinity so try to remember this because these are the few important parameters which you will encounter in many of the exams or this is required to understand many of the concepts in inorganic chemistry so with this today i will try to conclude my lecture here and maybe in my next video which i am going to upload very soon hopefully by next week i am going to explain about electronegativity and i will discuss few question answer which came in iit jam as well as csir net for the last few years so that's all the best for your iit jam and csir net and thank you very much for watching my video those who are new to my channel kindly subscribe and put a click on the bell icon so that you can get updated about my videos thank you